Mathematics. What is mathematics? We've all heard of it before, but how many of us truly know what it is? Some call it the science of numbers. Others call it the queen of sciences. While some know mathematics to be the worst thing that can happen to a teenager. These definitions are all valid to a certain extent. But regardless of all that, there's one thing that very few people consider mathematics. No one really calls mathematics a hobby. Now, I am someone who loves math and pursues it, pursues it as a hobby. So when I tell people that this is the case, that I enjoy reading about mathematics, I'm often met with very odd reactions. Some scratch their heads in utter confusion. Some blankly reply with, OK. While some, who are a bit more concerned about my well-being, would ask me, Benjamin, are you all right? <laughs> now, I never really understood why people would ask such questions, until recently. I've realized that there are two reasons why it's not common to think of mathematics as a hobby. First, many think that it is not a subject for everyone. That means it is only a subject that belongs to a specific group of people. Secondly, and this is a more potent preconception, it's the idea that there is nothing fun or pretty about mathematics. The problem with these preconceptions is that people miss out on a really wonderful pastime. And when they hear of math and its intricacies, they respond with, ah, whatever, and they move on with their lives. So, for the next six minutes, let's disconnect ourselves from this common line of thought and go off the grid to change the way we think of mathematics. I will prove to you that these preconceptions we hold are false and show you that exploring mathematics is definitely worthwhile. And with that, let us begin. The first preconception is that mathematics is not for everyone. But we as humans are, are inherently pattern-seeking individuals. And it just so happens that mathematics is a subject that is based on patterns. Now, that is not to say that everyone can become a mathematician, since becoming one requires far more than just recognizing patterns. But it is to say that everyone can grasp mathematics. To elucidate what I mean, here's a picture of someone you might recognize. The dazzling, the absolutely handsome, Ryan Reynolds. And a lot of people would agree that he's very handsome. Interestingly, if we were to draw lines of symmetry on Ryan Reynolds' face, we would notice something very peculiar. We would notice that there is almost a near-perfect symmetry in his face. Notice that his eyes are positioned at the centers of the trapezoids in which they're contained. Notice that the line connecting his jawbones passes directly between his lips. Notice, in addition to all this, that his face is almost perfectly vertically symmetric. It's as if all the components of his face were put together in brilliant proportion. This symmetry is why we find Ryan Reynolds so attractive. Psychologically, because we are such pattern-seeking animals, we tend to form a certain fancy, a predilection to such symmetry. And it's the same case with architecture and flowers. They're all founded on patterns in geometry. And we, by the simple fact of being human, trace patterns within them and admire them. Another example, is the iPhone X design. When it was released, a lot of people found the notch at the top of the phone to be quite unpleasant, and it's not without reason. You see, because of the notch, the iPhone would no longer be horizontally symmetric, and as a result, it would lose the uniformity in its design. This loss of symmetry is exactly why we find the design so unpleasant. You see, the very quality of chasing patterns is ingrained into our subconscious. And the fact that mathematics is almost entirely based on deducing patterns implies that anyone who wants to, who is willing to devote enough time and effort, can understand mathematics at least conceptually, if not completely. So we can prove that mathematics is not this exclusive subject for bearded old men. But now we must deal with preconception too, the more powerful, the more prominent one, the idea that there is nothing interesting or beautiful about the subject. I've already shown that mathematics is central to our idea of beauty. But the beauty of math is not confined to just geometry and symmetry, but transcends into other areas of math, 
such as number theory, which studies the patterns within numbers. What I'm about to present to you inspired me to explore math and showed me that even in simplicity lies profundity. So let's take a look at this. Take any positive integer greater than one. If it's an even integer, divide it by two. If it's an odd integer, multiply it by three and add one. If the resulting product is even, you repeat the same process, you divide it by two. If it's odd, you multiply it by three and add one. And you continue this again and again. Let's do this with an example. Let's take the beautiful odd number nine. Nine is odd, so we must multiply it by three and add one to get 28. But 28 is even, so we must divide it by two to get 14. And 14 is again even, so we must divide it to get seven. Now seven is odd, so we must multiply it by three and, and add one to get 22. And we continue the sequence again and again. Notice that the red, that the red digits are, are, quite, are, are a bit peculiar. Notice that as soon as you reach the number four, it goes to the number two, and two goes back to one. But since one is odd, you must multiply it by three and add one, and you go back to the number four. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached a loop. The number nine eventually, eventually devolves into a loop from four to two to one. And the lowest number it, 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 it attains is one. Now try to think of any other positive integer and apply the same process. And chances are that no matter how many steps it takes, the number will eventually reach this loop. The number will eventually reach one. Mathematicians have computed this for the first two raised to the power 68 positive integers and they've all passed the test. Now here's the real deal. Here's the million dollar question, as mathematicians like to put it. Can we prove that every single positive integer reaches one through this process? Well, not yet. Because this problem, often called the Collatz conjecture or the 3x plus one conjecture, has been around for almost 70 years and no one, not even the greatest mathematical minds of the 20th and the 21st century, has been able to solve it. Some mathematicians have even gone so far as to say that mathematics simply isn't ripe enough to solve it. Now sure, this appears as a great fundamental problem at the core of mathematics, but to me, this is much more. This is an epitome of what mathematics is really all about. A problem that any sixth grader could understand can be so multifaceted and deep. Superficially, we just think of maths as ones, twos, and threes. But problems such as the Collatz conjecture forces to peer deeper into the complex underlying web that we call mathematics, a painting whose color becomes more chaotic the more you look. So I've just shown that our preconceptions of mathematics, which prevent us from really exploring this subject, are false. But what does all this mean for you, the people in the audience? All I'm saying is that we should change the way we think about this subject, that we should not absorb these silly ideas and preconceptions because they inhibit us from, uh, from exploring something that is inherently very interesting. Part of the reason we absorb these ideas in the first place is because we often confuse mathematics that is taught at school with mathematics as a discipline, the mathematics that I've just shown you. Firstly, these are very distinct fields. Mathematics at school entails memorizing formulas, identifying all the possible questions that may be asked in an exam and determining how many watermelons Johnny has. But mathematicians do things a bit differently. They try to understand why formulas are the way they are. They ask questions instead of memorizing them. They deconstruct why Johnny has 50 watermelons. My point is, you should not let the educational system dictate your love for this subject. Fortunately for all of us, the educational system is ever evolving. The traditional techniques of teaching mathematics are being more and more obsolete, which means hopefully in the future, these preconceptions will also be obsolete. If there's one thought I'd like to leave you with, it's a question of whether we should conform to the idea that mathematics is uninteresting and esoteric, whether we should form our own opinion or remain complacent, whether we should follow the herd or choose to go off the grid and explore a beautiful discipline. That choice rests with you. Thank you.